Yeah. Yeah. Good morning, everybody. So the archery hunt started a couple days ago. I do not have an archery tag, but we are out looking for bucks because I've got a muzzleloader tag, so does my dad. We are in Southern Utah, and we came out this morning scouting for bucks, looking for water, places that we are gonna wanna set up for this hunt. And I just wanted to share a couple things with you guys. It's late morning now, probably around eight o'clock. And uh, as you can see, we're in this big, beautiful bowl, which uh, has some water in it. We're here looking at deer signs, setting up some cameras. We got about five weeks till our hunt starts. So we're just trying to find the perfect buck for us. We've got plenty of deer that we've been seeing, but you gotta get the right one. And I just had a run in with a rattlesnake. I got some really cool footage of him. So I'm gonna add that in here so you guys can see that. And then I also want you to see some of the petroglyphs that are in this bowl where we're hunting now, the Native Americans were hunting years and years ago. So I'm gonna take you guys over and kind of show you some of these they are really cool and uh, just kind of give you an idea of what it's like down here. Old Indian petroglyphs. This is not a historical site in any sense. This is just out in the wilderness where me and my family hunt. And I actually just came across these for the first time. I've never seen these petroglyphs before. My father saw them many years ago when he was hunting here. And we're hunting these bucks nowadays, muzzleloaders, rifles, archery, but this is what they were hunting them with back in the day. They've actually got the arrowheads that they used to use. I'm guessing these are a couple uh, stick figures, men. I don't know what the depiction is, but you can see the three arrows here. Got one, two, and three. And I just think it's amazing that we have the opportunity to come and hunt in a place where people used to do this. Who knows how long people have been hunting in our hunting grounds. It's just beautiful to see. I'm gonna take you guys along this journey this hunting season. I hope you guys are all having luck finding the bucks that you wanna get on. And good luck to everybody. Stay tuned for the rest of the video. We'll have some cool things coming. We actually have more petroglyphs. Look up here. I'm no expert on Native American uh, petroglyphs in any way, but it's just really cool to see them and admire what they came and did in the past, so. Okay, I wanna show you guys something. See this trail here? You can see a lot of disturbance here. We haven't had any rain in this desert for at least three months. So everything's extremely dry, it's hard to track, it's sandy. But you can see this has been turned over recently. A lot of foot traffic right here. And then you can see here, we've got a bed. The buck's a buck, doe, whatever. Deer's been in here, I'm assuming it's a buck. And then you can see the large, there's, you'll see poop scattered everywhere, but you can see a large amount here, here, over here. You can actually see where a deer stood and peed and left a stain on the rock, right? So, a deer spent a lot of time here, and the reason they've done so is so that they can overlook this valley. That way they can see what's coming in and out of here, keep themselves safe, so they know if it's safe to go down to water or not. They're way up on the top of this hillside. They've got a lot of exit routes. They can go up, they can go down. They can go either direction to get up out of here. And you can see we're right on the edge of this big bowl, right? Same place where I shot the intro, I'm just higher up. Intro I shot over there on that, lid, on that ledge. So the deer will stay on these high points, but he's shaded by these trees all day long, and, but he can see what's going on. Keeps him safe all day. Look at him sniffing the camera, getting right up in his face. Talk about a view.
but you notice he won't strike the camera because there's no heat signature coming off the camera. That's how these snakes can detect you. He's basically coming up and licking it, but he won't strike because he doesn't know what the camera is. What a beautiful animal. We're just gonna let him be. It's probably like 10 o'clock at the moment. It's getting super hot. It's supposed to be like 110 degrees here today. So that's why we came as early as we could. I just wanted to show you guys the amazing view that we have right here. Zions National Park in Southern Utah is actually right behind me. And it's a beautiful view. The valley's kind of foggy because of all the fires that are going on. This is actually the area where I'm hunting, but the view's incredible. And if it wasn't so foggy, you'd be able to see the mountains better, but I still wanted to show you guys and kind of tell you what we came across today. Came across two rattlesnakes, which I have videos of both of them. You guys have probably either seen already or you're gonna see in a second. And we found some nice trails where we know where deer are coming in. We found some water out here in this desolate desert, um, which is a key factor when you're hunting deserts like this because it limits the deer to a certain amount of um, area that they need to cover. Water, everybody knows, is key. So especially in a place like this where the water is scarce, if you can find a place where bucks are coming in to get water, mule deer are patterned animals, then you can get you can get set up in a place where you can find those bucks coming in every time. So a lot of the times though, you can't get those bucks directly on the water, but you can get your cameras on the water and you can see what time those deer are coming into the water and you can get a judge of where those deer are gonna be at daybreak or at, in the evening. Because the problem that a lot of people run into is they'll get pictures of monster bucks. The same thing's happened with me. I have pictures of really big bucks on watering holes, but the deer are coming in at four in the morning, three in the morning, midnight, 10 o'clock, which you can't hunt. And you don't know where the deer are at any time that you can see them. And a lot of big bucks are bedded down by the time you even get out of bed sometimes. As soon as day breaks come and bucks go to bed, really big bucks, at big mature mule deer, they'll start going to bed right at daybreak. They'll already be up very close to their beds. I've had that experience multiple times in my life. And uh, so what you need to do is, and the reason that we're hiking so far from the water right now, is trying to find where those deer are coming from to hit the water. We'll see what kind of bucks are on the water so we know if we want to hunt those bucks. But we come this far away from the water and we track those deer to see where they're coming from so that we can get a time reference. If I get a buck on my camera at 10 p.m. and I can track him where he's gonna be two hours prior from that where it's gonna be daylight in the evening, I can hunt that buck in the evening. But if I try to hunt the buck on the water, there's no way I can do that because he gets there way too late. He's there in, in the middle of the night. So it's very important to find where those deer are coming from and traveling to the water. So that's what we're out here doing. And uh, we just stopped to glass this. This bowl is enormous. You can't glass the entire thing. And it's just a sheer cliff right here. But sometimes if you want the monster deer, you've gotta, you've gotta do some hiking. So I just wanna show you guys a quick view of this valley because it's pretty breathtaking. Enormous mountain range over here. This is Zions National Park up in this area here. This is all BLM land out in here, but this is that's the national park up in those big, beautiful mountains. Sorry about the fog, <clears throat> smoke from all the fires we have, but look at this enormous bowl, enormous bowl. The cliff sides, they start right here. And these mount, I can't explain to you how big these mountains are. Making an enormous bowl going around this entire valley. You've got water down inside this valley. You've got plenty of feed and this is an extremely isolated area. Nobody's ever up here. The deer hardly ever see anybody. The only thing the deer have to worry about is mountain lions, coyotes, those kind of things. And the deer can just go on about their lives here and they never have to leave. So if you think about it, big mature mule deer, if he's gonna be in an area like this, why does he have to go anywhere? He's gonna have, he has feed, he has water, 
and he's got shade. He can stay, stay cool during the day. He can be in safe places. And <clears throat> a lot of the deer down here, people talk about migrating deer, but not all deer migrate. A lot of times we're looking for what's called resident deer, resident bucks. There's a big crow flying over. Resident bucks are bucks that stay in a place where most deer migrate. This enormous mountain you see behind me, a lot of deer go up there for the summertime because it's cooler and that's where they live and they come down in the winter because there's too much snow. But there's bucks that'll stay down here, desert bucks, that'll stay down here in the desert all year round because there's no need for them to leave. So those resident bucks are the deer that we're after because they don't get pressured, they don't have to migrate, and they stay hidden because they're sitting pretty in these pockets. So it's hard to find that one trophy of a lifetime buck, but if you put in the work and you find those places where nobody else goes and you can find those little pockets where there's water out here, those life sources for those animals, that's where you're gonna find your trophy deer. And it might take you a whole lifetime to do so. Some people go their entire lives without ever killing a trophy deer. And it all depends on what a trophy is to the individual. For me, it's a monster wide buck, you know, and it could be a buck half that size for somebody else. It doesn't matter. But it just depends on what your standards are and what you're looking for. But sometimes you have to go to the extreme to find those big bucks and find the buck that you want to go with. So hunting season's still five weeks away for me. I've got a muzzleloader tag in this southern Utah. So we're just going out and doing some spotting, trying to figure out what buck we're going to kill this season and uh, see if we can find the right one. That's the water. That's all the water these desert deer need. Everything comes to drink this water within five miles because there's no water anywhere else. Quickly, I'm going to give you guys a close-up look of uh, exactly what I did to mount this camera. It's taking videos right now. <laughs> Just set this boulder here nice and square so I knew the camera could sound good. Wrapped the paracord around. I made a loop in one end. Ran the, the cut off and through the loop. Pulled it so it cinched down nice and tight. And then just wrapped that through and knotted. And I put this rope on top of the knots, the slack line to keep it from coming loose and just to keep it from blowing in the wind and maybe getting the camera tripped. So that's the setup. Okay guys, um, me and my dad were just coming out. We were spotting for deer in the truck in this big open valley. I spotted a coyote running across the valley, had the gun under the back seat, got it out, went and stood up on this hillside over here and started shooting at the coyote he was on the run. And then two more coyotes came out of a den right underneath my feet and came running right at me. Got about 10 feet away while I was shooting at the other one. Those two bolted off and I started shooting at the one that was far away, but before they both separated, I shot at him right here in this ditch. And the two got away, but I got one and he's right here in the ditch, so. This is the guy, this one came running right at me. Came running right at me when I shot, when I was shooting at the other two. And I got him on the run away from me. So that's a pretty exciting, Thing to happen shooting at three coyotes i'm glad i walked away with at least one of them <laughs> 